As with commercial products like Maya or 3D Max, a Blender also has a very rich set of plugins, or we call them add-ons. So what is an add-on? Programs like Maya or 3D Max, think about them more as an infrastructure. They're very popular because there are so many different plugins, add-ons that are written for them to extend actually the, the modeling, rendering, or design capability of each uh, mentioned program. And the same is true for Blender. So for example, uh, on this website, blenderaddonlist.blogspot.com, they kind of like try to accumulate all their various add-ons that are available for Blender and then categorize them in different uh, areas. So for example, let's go to Add Mesh. In Add Mesh, I'm gonna create a camera image plane. That's for example, one add-on. You see the image plane is perpendicular then to the camera. Uh, here's an add-on to quickly build uh, stairs or a coil. So you see through um, the interface and some parameters, you simply can set up different types of, of coils uh, or objects. So you don't model it all by hand. You simply tell the add-on what it should build for you. And this is actually pretty useful. So for example, here this... Uh, um, Archimesh, that is a really fantastic add-on that I would say actually pushes Blender way beyond what SketchUp is famous for and kind of like um, introduces the ease of use of SketchUp, but the power of the modeling tools Blender has and everything is parametric. So let's take a look at um, maybe what we have for architecture because Blender is also used a lot in that area because of how modular it actually is and also in architecture generative or parametric modeling is a very big thing so we have for example <laughs> um, like a, a brick wall thing you could create so you don't build everything by yourself and here we have a snap utility line tool um, for example, that enhances the way how you could uh, slice and cut into something and how it snaps. So um, let's say we would like to install this one. So you could go to download link and then it downloads it. And on the Mac side, it goes here in my account onto uh, downloads and there it is. Okay, so how do we get this into Blender? Let's start it. And we go to user preferences, add-ons, and then we click install from file. I have to go to downloads. There is the zip file and click install. So you do not want to unzip the zip files. Just keep them zipped. And to see what was installed, you can click on user. And there you see all the different um, how could I say that? Uh, Add-ons I, for example, have already installed. And here currently is Mesh Snap Utility Line. That is the, the add-on that I installed. And to activate it, you can click this button. Uh, and then now it will be every time when you start Blender, it will load it. Obviously, you have to also click uh, Save User. Uh, settings. If at one point you don't want certain um, add-ons to, to load, you simply then go to add-ons and deactivate it. So let's say you would like to swap out an add-on or delete it. So this, for example, is outdated. So I could click on the remove button here and that will then remove it. Um, I will show actually also where these add-ons are and do it manually. So let's go to uh, Blender, measure it. That's a really fantastic add-on. Uh, let's go to here. And what this add-on is doing is pretty much giving you, mm, nice music to start your morning. It's giving you the ability to apply dimensions to your design. Oh, you can, for example, measure distances, edges, etc., etc., etc. You can color code it, you can give names on it, 
and you could even, for example, uh, at one point render those out. So I use, for example, this add-on a lot so I have measurements inside my design. But how do you download this one? Oh, here, by the way, you see actually how you can see the add-ons while rendering. So we could go to uh, GitHub. And um, there is measure it one uh, so version one six point one. Click on it and uh, view raw, and then actually it will download it. And there it is. And let's go to our Blender folder. So I will make a new window. Press and hold Alt, go to library and uh, application support, Blender. And then inside your current version, you have scripts that you want to go in. Then we have add-ons, that folder, you want to go in there. And let's take a look at what we have here. And somewhere is the measurement, there is that folder. Uh, measure it. So that, for example, this folder I can simply delete. And then here, I will unzip this folder. And this whole thing I simply drag in. And now when I go back to Blender, go to User Preferences, User, uh, and where is it? There, measure it. See, one, six, one. Perfect. So I actually, this way then have removed manually the one, put the new one in, and um, Blender automatically kept this one activated. There are actually plenty of other add-ons. And on our course website, I created a link to one archive of, uh, or zip file of um, Blender add-ons. So if you click on this one, you will go to the Google Drive, just download this add-on. And this will actually have quite many add-ons I would like you to use, the, the measure it. Um, we have, uh, we'll introduce soon an add-on that brings AutoCAD-like drafting to Blender. We have a CATIA tool, we have Edge Offset, Quick Align, and Render to Print. Those are really very useful add-ons. Uh, I would nearly would to say every industrial designer should have installed in Blender. So download actually this, this zip file. And uh, hold on, it's also pretty small. And then all you have to do is, all this I delete, unzip this file, and then the complete content just drag over into your Blender add-on folder, and then you are set. And on Windows, obviously, you have to go to the correct uh, directory as well, but also there you have inside um, scripts the same folder to install the add-ons. I would like to end this video with a demonstration of a very fantastic add-on out of the Russian area, Svetchak. And Svetchak brings parametric modeling that is uh, common actually in experimental architecture to Blender. Now let's take a look at the demo reel so you will understand what I mean with parametric generative modeling. So all these architectural shapes there are not necessarily hand-built but through let's say mathematical definitions generated. For example this very organic paneling or so. But everything you can do for architecture in terms of form study maybe can also be applied to industrial design. So for example what you see here is kind of like a receptionist table where all these panels were explored with chevrock cut and for example here with um, cardboard and then put together into a product and that is kind of like what I try uh, to to understand you that you have different disciplines but don't think about them as necessarily disciplines think about tools and is there a tool from a different discipline for example you could also use for yourself uh, for example here we have um, a lamp that was 
created using the same uh, generative modeling uh, philosophy they use in experimental architecture, but actually applied to uh, lighting design. Uh, and something like this or with the furniture is also if we have time and for the semester I would like to try out so you can understand kind of like um, how this process works and really where this would be a terrific design um, how could I say that uh, design extension to programs for example like Alias or Fusion because these programs natively are very weak at something like this but if you combine it together with Blender or so you have a really fantastic and powerful design tool set.